but the guy's lost 22 pounds in a matter of about six or seven weeks only because he stopped drinking soft drinks. Okay, so today we're talking about nutrition and kids. So the space that I'm in, I get a lot of questions about food, but also about food and your kids. And so people are always asking, how do you feed your kids healthy and all these different types of things. And so there are a lot of things and the only thing I can speak to is what we do. There are tons of studies out there about this and about that. And so let's, I'm just going to talk about our experiences. So number one thing is when you're talking about eating healthy with your kids, we've got to take out as opposed to add. So many times when people think about healthy things, they think, well, I got to eat this healthy. I got to eat this healthy. I got to eat this healthy. The most important thing is taking the bad out as opposed to putting the good in. So let's take the bad out. So a great example is just when losing weight. I have a friend of mine who's in his 40s, wonderful guy, you know, in pretty really good shape, really active. But the guy's lost 22 pounds in a matter of about six or seven weeks only because he stopped drinking soft drinks. He didn't add anything to his thought process or diet or even activity. All he did was take something out. And so with our kids, the way to get them healthier is at some point you have introduced something that's not the greatest for them in the world. And so we got to figure out a way to take that out. So for us, the great example for us is when we lived in Tennessee, our kids started eating gogurts. And gogurts have a persona of being healthy because they're yogurt. They're not. Let's just, I'm just going to say that right now. They're not because they are, have so much sugar and so many preservatives in there that they're just not the best thing for our kids. And so what's one of the things we had the box of yogurts and we, when we got done with that, we, we quit buying them. So when we quit buying them, they asked for them for a couple of days. And then after that, they forgot about them. They're kids. They forget about things really, really easy. So we want to take the bad things out in order to put the good things in down the road. But taking out is more important than adding. The next thing is let's turn the ship slow. What does that mean? So the great example I use is if I'm in, in the ocean with a wave runner, I can go really, really fast and I can turn that wave runner and I can turn it and everything will be fine. But if I'm on a cruise ship and I'm going to drive that thing going real fast and I turn the cruise ship really, really fast, it's going to throw everybody off the ship. The one thing you don't want to do in your family is kick the door down and throw everybody off the ship and get everybody frustrated. So let's turn the ship. So it goes back to point one where we're going to take small things out of our diet and then add the good things back in. So I want to turn the ship slow and make small changes over time as opposed to making changes over the weekend. The next thing is the grocery store. Let's use the grocery store as our discipline. So I have really, really good discipline for the 30 seconds when I pass the Oreos in the cookie aisle. I don't have very good discipline if I pass Oreos 47 times a day in my house. And so I'm much more likely to say no at the grocery store than I am at home. So don't even tempt yourself. The things that you don't need at your house, don't buy them. Have the discipline for 30 seconds as you walk down the aisle of Bluebell ice cream, praise God. And don't buy those things there so that you don't have to resist them all week long at your house. The next thing is get your kids involved. Find things that are fun. So how do you do this? You don't just flip open the computer and say, go pick guys. You pick five or six different things and let them pick from those things. Those things that are approved. So whether it be the fancy pictures or in the, on the internet or, or in books or whatever, but pick four or five things and say, okay guys, you get to pick two of the meals this week and let them pick those things. That way they are getting involved and they're getting excited, excited about something that they've seen and that they want to create. Why is this food thing so important? Because food affects so many parts of our daily life. The example I use all the time, working out and activity is so important. But if you work out one hour a day, six days a week, that's a lot. But you're going to eat, let's just say 30 minutes a day, three times a day. That's an hour and a half a day, seven days a week. You're putting food in your body so much more than the activity that you're doing. So the food that you put in your body has so many things to do with the mental, the physical, the nervous, everything in your body, your food has to do with. And so it's, it's, it's the slow drip of things over time that make us better. That's, that's a habit that, that has been around for, for hundreds and thousands of years. And so the food in our bodies is so much more important than people believe. They say, ah, it's just this, it's just that. No, we're doing it every day, all day. So we've got to make sure that we're feeding our bodies correctly because if we don't, we can lead to the, the number one cause of death in our country, which is obesity. And the last thing we want to do is create bad habits in our kids so that they have bad habits as their adults. Again, we've talked about this before. We want to make great citizens. And if we can make great citizens nutritionally and have them to be disciplined with what they're eating, I'm not saying they've got to be so disciplined that they just don't eat any sugar at all. I mean, I get that. You, you have to have those things in your life. But let's get, put them on a path to where they can make good decisions throughout the rest of their life. And building those habits now when they're born all the way through their teenage years and beyond are so important. How do we do it at our home? We try to live by the, the philosophy of eating real food. 
If it has one ingredient, it's probably going to be okay to eat. If my 11 year old can't pronounce any of the ingredients on the package, we probably don't need to be eating it. So we, we like to filter things through that. We want to eat real food and we want to move. That's a motto that we've lived by in our home for so long is we want to eat real food and we want to move. We eat a lot of the same things. We, all, all our kids and our, our, my wife and I eat the same thing for breakfast every morning. Is that boring? Yeah, it is, but it makes it mindless and it's really, we're meeting expectations. Every now and then we'll have pancakes or things like that that are a little bit out of the ordinary. But for the most part, we're eating the same things for breakfast every morning. Our lunches are, are really similar where we get out of the box a little bit is at dinner. But again, we're still eating real food every day. We're eating fruits, we're eating vegetables, we're eating meats. Sometimes we don't even eat meats. And so we're trying to stick to the things that are real food and that are one ingredient. So in closing, I've given you a lot of different things in here. So I wanted to give you something that you can do today that will help you and that you can build on. The first thing is, let's figure out one thing in our refrigerator or our pantry that we can take out. Let's finish that box or that container or whatever, and then after that, let's don't buy any more of those things. Guys, nutrition is incredibly important because it's something that we do all day, every day, and we as the parents are in charge of those little human beings that are running around our house. Start early and be consistent with the things that we're doing in our daily lives for nutrition for our kids because it will make a difference in the long run.